Welcome to another Thursday and Geeks of the Week, I'm Mario. But don't forget to vote for Vader. This brings us to our comic reviews, and usually I'll be doing my top 5 for the last month around this time, but my goatee is telling me to do otherwise, so we will bring that back next week. Also, I was expecting to have a Boba Fett review in this video, but let's just say we really didn't see eye to eye. Okay, so what do I do? Well, you have to talk about him. I mean, that's what the review's for. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't like them. And why didn't you like them? Well, because I wasn't in it. I mean, you know, I can't really give a good criticism about it. Overall, I rate this 4 out of 5 stars. That's great, but we kind of read that last week, so... You know what? Wait, wait, where are you going? You, you can't, you can't leave, you have to, you still have to do a review. Come back! Next, I'll be reading The Search Part 1, and the reason why I wanted to do this review was because of the hype that I heard about it from the fan base, and also, I don't know where that came from. Several months after the series finale, Zuko, with the help of Team Avatar, go in search of Zuko's mother. And with the help of Zuko's sister Azula, they come across some secrets that probably will be a shocker. So far, part one is very satisfying, and if you are a fan of the series and have wanted this question answered, I would highly recommend you getting this book. But as a new reader, I'm a little bit hesitant of recommending it. This kind of still goes, and there are a couple of things that are said within the book that you probably, that most people probably wouldn't understand unless they have actually watched the series. So there's also that. And some relationships don't necessarily seem to make sense, and it's basically a continuation. So if you really fully want to grasp what's going on and better appreciate it, I would highly recommend just watching the whole thing and then coming back to it. Surprises and secrets and being a shocker, it's not really that shocking. Not in the sense that it was bad, but just overall in the sense that everything was kind of predictable. The only criticism on the art style is the character design for Aang. He does appear a lot older in the series, so he looks like he's about in his mid to late teens. So there could be a big guess as to when this takes place after the series finale. It could be six months, it could be a couple of years. But aside from that, I would give this series a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This week we'll be starring Disney and how they like to bring us joy, but then also kick us in the ball. So let's start with the good news. Good news! Starting this month, Stark Industries will be bringing their Iron Man tech to Tomorrowland at Disneyland. Bad news! Disney also over the weekend decided to shut down the game company LucasArts. The worst news! Now you probably won't even get Star Wars 1313. <laughs> and sure, there are probably Star Wars games that were probably bad, but you know, there was also some good ones. You gotta admit, that dance game was really good, right? I'm solo, I'm I'm solo. Nope. Oh. Well, um, I... But there's possibly still a chance that the game might actually be released by a different company, so hopefully that works out. Well, that wraps it up for me this week, and next Thursday I'll be back with more reviews. And until then, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and leave comments, and watch the other geeks this week, and follow my Twitter. And until then, have an awesome week, and stay geeky. And don't forget to vote for Vader, because together we will rule the galaxy. <laughs>